Do uh, you have a copy of the agenda? Yes, I did. Okay, great. If you have any questions, just give us a call afterwards, all right? Okay. I uh, hope everyone's having a nice summer so far. How are you? Good? Fine, thanks. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I guess why don't we start with uh, any public comments? Okay. Oh, good. I just have two quick ones, I think. Sure. Um, and I know Catholic schools do this. The, um, um, wait, I have to think of what mode I'm in here. School, snow days. We go by 180 days a year. I know Catholic schools and other schools go by hours. Across the street, they go by hours. Is that a possibility? Because they seem to be done, have the same amount of snow days as we do, but they're out weeks before us. Well, there's a minimum amount of hours that we are required to fulfill. Uh, there are special requirements that if you don't get the 180 days that you have to apply to the state to qualify on hours. But there are there is some funding tied to it depending on certain scenarios. You may or may not be ex excused for that time and then mm -hmm. you lose some, <coughs> some of the funds that you normally recoup. Is it, that, that flows on the Right, right. In all our, you know, teacher contracts and everything are by days. Oh, uh, right. I think you're saying that. And, and well, you just know you know, going through the private school system, they don't have to make up any amount of hours or days. Yeah. Because they're not under state or federal regulations because they don't take money. Mm, so yeah. that's why, you know, they don't have to put in 180 days or so many hours. And, and school districts are given up until June 30th to complete the 180 days, so it has to be a really special exact, like flooding that's happened in the past, or some of the severe weather when we had the hurricane and power outages and things like that. I noticed uh, the Obama Hawk Act requested a waiver. Uh, the teachers still came in with the kids with the kids. Nice. Then the other thing, and I know it's not just crossing your arms and blinking, is a, is a three hour delay. I know we have um, from transportation where we bring some kids to Long Paul Pack or Hollandsay or something like that. So that all has to be coordinated, yes. and then how it would be coordinated with the lunches in each of the schools. Like people just start screaming about three-hour delays. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. We actually had that conversation today earlier, and you know we, we did look at what a schedule would look like. Our, our principals put together some some sample uh, schedules. Um, we did speak to Wayne Highlands and Paul Popak for the consortium because, as we said, transportation is a concern. Currently, they're not considering the three-hour delay, so it might. Be a little bit more difficult on our end to coordinate uh, services for, for those students, um, but we are considering that, and we're, we're we're keeping it on the table as an option at this point. We're just working on some logistics. So, if they don't want to do it, does that mean we can't do it? It doesn't mean we can't. It just might be we, there is some. If they're bringing busing students here, and we're on a three, and they're on a two, the obvious problem: no one to receive those students. So that that. If the three districts that cooperate on those things don't work together, it can become a problem. It's more, more difficult. Yes, we have to work out the communication pathways and, and routes. And how's, how's that going to impact either our drivers, if they have other routes, uh, or their drivers, if they have other routes, or they don't be able to get the kids there at the right time. Because some people drive from both districts. Well, I'll volunteer to be here on some of those days just to get <laughs> I'm not kidding, because I have to tell you that, you know, I've stepped in the school in the last three weeks, every teacher and administrator is walking around like this, and the kids are walking around like this, and, and no one, I, nobody wanted to be here the last two weeks of school. They, everybody was done, so whatever I could do to help get it out, get us out earlier, let me know. We're, we're hoping that... The last, last couple of years are, are an anomaly. Three hour. weeks earlier so, to start. <laughs> that's, not, the that's the far end of the spectrum in terms of average sure. snow days. Typically, we're around between eight and nine. I know. Two years ago, we had you know two or three, and we were out in May. I I know. It was May Memorial Day weekend. I know. Yeah. And if we have fifteen, we'll still be out at the middle of June. Middle, yeah, we're starting over. I know we are. So. We're hoping for the yes. best. But you'll be at the top of that list. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be worried. I will. And you're on it. And since we're talking about substitutes, it's my last thing to talk about. Just FYI, guest teachers at Walpole Path are making 95 a day. Okay. We're still doing 85 here and not getting paid for the prep periods. Anything on that? 
thank you. No, no, not well, thank you. It was, oh, Victoria, guess what? We're bumping you guys up to $10 a day. <laughs> that will be a discussion for uh, next month. We'll say. And we do have those Wait, I could swear I heard time. that six months ago. All right. <laughs> thank you. Um, Okay, anything else? I just had one question. I noticed that the, the tonight's meeting is now already erased off of the board outside at the bottom of the hill. Okay. Maybe we could leave it on just till the end of the day so when folks are driving mm -hmm. by, because it says next upcoming meeting and it has the August meeting, it doesn't have Yeah, tonight. I know they were having some difficulties with um, mm -hmm. some software, I believe it was, with that sign. So, so they changed the date for the next meeting? The date is changed. I, I, yeah. I, I it says August 2nd now instead of August. Okay. Right. So they were able to change the date, but they they erased the current. And, and Dr. Barrett, I would just add that the next meeting is this week, so it probably is going to be announced pretty quickly. It's on. The, the, the yeah. August 2nd meeting is up. But, but, but that may be why. I don't know. I'll have to speak to Because you know how upsetting it is yes. when you rush here and then there's. Technology. It's, yeah. So. You mean when you That'd rush here and you're an hour earlier, an hour late? <laughs> yeah. It has happened, I've heard. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll, we'll be sure to look okay. yeah. Thank you. All right, moving to the agenda. Um, this agenda is primarily a lot, mostly um, annual updates, uh, contract renewals, and personnel. So um, we do have our typical approval of bills, treasurer's report, uh, recognition of the public. Number 10, uh, this is, uh, these are two board policies that need to be updated annually for Title I and federal programs. Uh, that's regarding uh, family engagement. There's no changes to them whatsoever. We just have to look at them every year. If there were changes, we would see. Exactly, any updates or, or changes that are different than uh, similar to the handbooks, we will send those out as we need. Uh, number 11, there's a memorandum of, of, of understanding with Cane Christian Academy. Uh, we've been working with uh, Principal Bull and some of their staff members to coordinate uh, evacuation uh, drills if, if, if we need to access their facilities or vice versa. Uh, in the case of, of a weather event or whatever emergency might take place, that we're, we're agreeing to you know, collectively work on it together and, and access either facility for depending on the needs. So uh, we did some <coughs> lockdown drills with them. They, they joined us for uh, a couple drills with the state police uh, before the end of the school year. So we're looking just to continue that communication and plan together uh, for, for those situations. Number 12 is, this is a, re a resolution that is being uh, passed around statewide, uh, at least uh, half, if not uh, more than half of districts across the state have already uh, approved this uh, resolution opposing voucher programs. But basically, that would take funds away from our district taxpayer money, channeling to individuals who want to access a private education. So uh, we want to keep it our funds here for our students. Uh, just, that's what that does. You should have a copy of that in the packets. I think PSBA, the PSBA has promoted, you know, <coughs> made a push for this. They, they sent us a few emails requesting, quite a few emails requesting that we, we support the opposition. Number 13, uh, this is our uh, authorization to deposit our general fund account with uh, Hosdale National Bank. Uh, we've been working with them the last couple of years, and this is primarily for the bond rose mm -hmm. correct? So, uh, so they can make transactions uh, without having to write a check every, every time. Right, being that both accounts are at the same bank, it's just that they would transfer funds from one to the other with this awesome. <coughs> 14 are the service contracts, uh, simplex, or, or our PA system clocks, our elevator at, at uh, middle school, and Evergreen, uh, these are the contracts that we annually renew so that they can have them serviced. Um, 15, this is, this is a new lease for 
our new stamp machine. Our old one recently uh, failed, so uh, within the last year of those stuff, we might be able to get some more time out of it. However, uh, we were not so lucky. However, uh, the cost of this lease is less than current, correct? So that's saying us a little, a little bit of money and we're getting uh, the vending machine. 16 are the updated handbooks for this coming school year. And as we said, any changes uh, we send to you and everything else has remained the same. So if you, if you need a, an electronic copy, pseudomance, or a photo paper copy, pseudomance, we can give you a full, full one uh, if you desire. Number 17, the school safety and security coordinator. This is a new requirement from PDE mandating that districts uh, appoint someone per school year to be this coordinator, uh, basically a liaison between uh, emergency management personnel filing reports to the state, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that is going to be me for this coming school year. So and, and the duties that go along with that. Number 18. Uh, these are extended school year transportation contracts for the remainder of uh, the summer program. Uh, 19 are driver, transportation drivers and substitutes for the upcoming school year. 20, uh, we do have a new contract with uh, a, a new van run. So that's the individual there. Uh, 21 are transportation contracts. So basically this 21 is authorizing me to approve contracts prior to getting formal board approval. So depending on, we, we, we did this last year and we did it before, um, just so each contractor doesn't have to wait up until the next board meeting to start driving if we have a need. And especially in this time of year in the summer, we're still organizing contracts and making sure that the routes are, are established, and, and, et cetera. So uh, that just gives me the okay to, to approve those prior to formal board approval. Uh, 22, uh, this is a teacher visually impaired that's been working with our extended school year. Uh, this is at, on an as-needed basis. This is the same individual as last year. Uh, I, I don't believe there are many services needed, but that's the contract for an agreement with this individual. 23 is our annual Head Start agreement with Spent Lackawanna Human Development. The next, all of these next several items are just <coughs> annual updates. Uh, 23 <coughs> is our, our alternative education placement with PATH in Scranton, uh, and the rates are there. I believe they're a little bit more expensive uh, than what we worked with in Homesdale, but uh, however, Homesdale PATH closed last year, so the only available option is Scranton. Commonwealth Health, uh, the Genesis, Genesis School, in case any uh, special students with special needs need to access that the facility. Uh, same thing with First Hospital in 26. Um, 27, uh, Child Service Center. Uh, again, any students with special needs with therapeutic education. Um, those are the, the, the rates for the upcoming year. 28 is service agreement with Wayne County Drug and Alcohol. Uh, they did ask uh, for an increase this year. Last year it was at $4,000. Uh, it, it has been at $4,000 for several years uh, without any increase. So they did request to bump that up a little bit for their services. Uh, and that they work closely with our student assistance program uh, and our students. And 29 is our dual enrollment with Johnson College. Um, close to 30 available credits that students may access through this dual enrollment agreement uh, here at Western Lane, which is phenomenal. So that's, that's a great opportunity for kids to access. The credits are transferable uh, to other schools if they, if they don't decide to go to Johnson, but it's a nice, nice segue into Johnson if they decide to. That as well. 
and if there are a variety of courses in there. Um, we do have an appointment for a deputy tax collector in Clinton Township at 1 30. Uh, 31 is our renewal with Prosper and uh, the uh, family program that was very successful last year, it was very positive, and uh, it's just great to see families come out and participate in that as well as uh, our, our staff and administrators and board members that participated. It was tremendous, uh, very valuable. 32 um, victims intervention programs. So the, the, also, these, this group comes in to work with our student assistance uh, program and they'll take recommendations through that process for any students in need. Uh, that's their annual fee, which is the same as, as last year. 33. I believe we are still waiting to hear about this. We have not confirmed 33, so this may or may not be on the table um, on Thursday. Uh, basically, this allows us to submit our professional development hours per employee to the NEIU, NEIU who then submits that to the state through whatever program they have down there, which I'm not sure, but they, um, they do that on our behalf. And, that's the way it's the same as last year. Uh, 34 are the job descriptions for two positions that we're hoping to hire, the behavior health specialist and the athletic director. I'm not sure if we received the athletic director when we just made a couple of last minute tweaks, but we can send that out uh, tomorrow so we can take a look. But I did have a sample up on the website uh, just made a couple quick um, tweaks to it, added in a few things. There was an old athletic director uh, job description that we had on file, but it was from 1996, and a little bit outdated, so we didn't have to have some things that we know we, we needed. Um, and the behavioral health specialist is a new position. Uh, we do have a substitute list, athletic uh, 35A. There is a sabbatical, uh, a health sabbatical for an employee for the first semester of this coming school year. Um, and then we do have, in letter C, several resignations uh, due to uh, teachers' relocation, uh, staff wanting to be closer to home, or moving for family reasons, etc. Um, there are those four resignations and as a result of that our sabbatical um, and our, our new positions we have several individuals on the appointments coming up so we do have six um, teaching positions full-time as well as two long-term substitutes in the letters D and E and then our appointment for an athletic director letter F Letter G, uh, next page. This is a, um, this position was for this past year, so we're back reading this because the individual that had the, um, the appointment became ill and was unable to do it, and uh, this employee came in at that and, and helped out and uh, was able to complete the process throughout the remainder of the year. So we're making uh, this individual, the, the uh, advisor for this past school year, and then in letter H, this is for the upcoming school year. So we should continue to do that. And then we have an assistant musical director and advisor. Uh, we do have some coaching appointments for uh, football assistant coaches. Uh, this one's a little bit unique. We have four positions available, however, there are three individuals splitting two positions. Okay, so they're equally dividing those salaries for the two positions, but the same salary overall cost-wise, but they're dividing that up equally so that everybody has uh, some payment. We, uh, letter K, I will explain a little bit more in uh, executive session, but there is uh, a transfer from a paraprofessional position to Secretary position for the start of this coming school year. 
and as a result of some of these things that have taken place with personnel. Uh, this is not a technically uh, new position. No. We're not creating a position. We're just shifting some duties around and, uh, and, and the title classification of this case. Letter L are the, uh, the mentors for the new professional staff that have not completed an, an induction program. So uh, we have aligned those so that they can complete that requirement uh, with, with that induction program. So those are the mentors. Um, letter M, we have an approval of elementary student assistance program team members. Uh, that's for both R.D. Wilson and Evergreen. And then we have a list of volunteers and some upcoming dates uh, moving forward. So the only one on number four on upcoming dates, we're still waiting to, to solidify a time for the new teacher orientation. That may change and maybe early in the morning rather than what's listed there. And that's that's our agenda. Do you have any questions? We do a lot of several years. A couple of us have attended. We said the school teachers, at least when they're used to it. The answer is yes. Yeah, Bill's gone. I recommend it to everybody. I think it was a, just kind of a show that we're part of the team and we know about the new year. Yeah, we'll, we'll introduce the staff. Everybody will have a uh, myself. Uh, Ellen and uh, probably a few other administrators will be speaking at the East End. And hopefully, I'll go into the program and I'm excited for the school year. So, uh, custodians, cafeteria staff, uh, basically, just to give you a sense of what will happen. We'll, we'll do our introduction presentation and then we break up and Katie's one of those comes in and they do a presentation for uh, retirement programs and things like that. So if you are going to come, I would say come right at the start at 8 o'clock. And then leave right after once we start getting into that other yeah. stuff that really does pertain to. It's been maybe an hour. Yeah. yeah. So now a reminder for that part of the I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the 22nd. 22nd. 8.30. But we can, we'll send that <coughs> to the We usually have like, some of coffee and refreshments that we can welcome in. Time and then we head into the auditorium and then Just just while it's fresh in my mind, uh, sure. does the district have anything in place on social media um, educating the kids um, what to watch for with their posting? We, we do have that. Oh, you mean in terms of uh, just in their own safety in terms of. Well, in, in general, and the reason why I bring it up is just recently on uh, baseball and there's been players who have posted things while they were in high school that have come to light when a great event has happened. All of a sudden, now this comes out that seven years ago they did this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just afraid that the kids nowadays are going to do something that isn't going to pop up until some big event happens, a job, a promotion, whatever, and they never really thought about that. It, it doesn't have to be on a negative end either. It can be promoting themselves on a positive end, but there's so 